This episode of the Beauté by Avic podcast is brought to you by the Aesthetic and Beauty Industry Council. Hello and welcome to the Beauté by Avic podcast, your online support community for the aesthetic and beauty industry. Here, we are strengthening and unifying the industry through representation, innovation and education. This is a platform created and dedicated to the aesthetic and beauty industry, valuing unity and advancement. We serve to represent, support and inspire you by connecting you with industry experts, expanding your knowledge through educational pieces and bringing you the latest industry news. This is Beauté by Avic. I'm your host, Stephanie Miller, and today's guest is Dr. Ingrid Tall from Cosmetic Image Clinics and Aquarius Health and Medispa. With 25 years of experience as a general practitioner and cosmetic doctor, Dr. Ingrid Tall has made a significant mark in the medical and cosmetic fields. Her journey was inspired by the rejuvenating power of day spas experienced during a family vacation in Europe. In 2011, she brought this vision to Brisbane, founding the Aquarius Health and Medispa and Cosmetic Image Clinics in the city's CBD. From a modest beginning, the facility has evolved into one of Brisbane's largest award-winning and most comprehensive luxury Medispas, offering an array of services and facilities, including cosmetic medicine, indoor heated pool, finished dry saunas, IV nutrient treatments, hot and cold magnesium pools, steam rooms, gym facilities and so much more. Her career in cosmetic medicine was ignited in 1993 while working as a medical reporter for Channel 10 News where she covered emerging treatments like laser resurfacing. This passion has seen her continuously update her skills and knowledge, keeping abreast of the latest industry developments. Along with her clinical work, Dr. Tall has been a key figure in the medical community, notably serving as the president of the Queensland Australasian Medical Association. Here to discuss her journey as a business owner and founder of award-winning Medispas and a pioneer in the field of penis filler technology from cosmetic image clinics and Aquarius Health and Medispa, today we welcome ABIC clinic member, Dr. Ingrid Tall. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Ingrid Tall. How are you today? Oh, very well, Steph. It's great to be here. I love talking with you. You are one super duper dynamic human being. I tell you what, blew (laughs) everything out of the water when I came into your clinic and met you and your team and saw your incredible space. So I was very excited to have you on the podcast today. Great. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Steph. I wanted to be able to put you on our podcast today so that our listeners and our audience and the industry at large can actually learn from you because I sat there and really absorbed all the information that you were giving me during our visit. And I thought, I've got to get you on the podcast because you have so much insight to share. But before we start, we always start our podcast the same way. We ask our guests a little bit about this themselves, about their history and how they came to be in the aesthetic industry. Well, uh, I actually uh, did a journalism degree after completing medicine. I thought it'd be exciting and and it was exciting actually. And I became a medical reporter for Channel 7, 9 and 10 here in Brisbane. And I was doing a story on laser resurfacing and that must be well, nearly 30 years ago ago now, Steph. And I thought, what an exciting development is that? And that piqued my interest. And I thought, let's get into this game. I was a a GP uh, at the time. And then I did the hybrid GP cosmetic medicine. Back then it was the collagen made from the foreskins of little baby boys. And that's about all we were doing. And then the laser came along and then we had hyaluronic acid that came along. And I must say, I am so delighted to be in this incredible booming industry. 
to me, it is like the world of IT and the internet, that it is one of the biggest growth industries in the world. And to be playing in this space is so exciting. And uh, I just love the way that we can make people just feel really good about themselves, boost their self-esteem. And uh, I think um, the gratification that you get from being a cosmetic doctor is actually surpasses for me being a GP. I know that's not for everyone, but uh, you just make people happy and uh, it's very rewarding. Well, I tell you what, you certainly have that aura about you and your whole clinic displays that aura of happiness, well-being, a welcoming kind of atmosphere. When I walked into that gorgeous space, I, I truly was blown away. Your space boasts a gym, a swimming pool, a sauna. Apart from being a cosmetic clinic, you opened up the doors to wellness and well-being. Tell us what else you offer in that space. Gosh, heavens, I think we have like 200 services that we offer in there. So it's a lot. And probably we need to specialize and drill down and focus a little bit more in life. Uh, but uh, I mean, we've also got uh, uh, plunge pools, magnesium plunge pools. You know, we've got the fitness classes. Uh, in the cosmetic space, we also have the intravenous vitamin therapies. I even saw a lash. Is it lash and brow space? Well, yes, actually, we've got, um, well, we do the usual waxing, of course. We do the tattooing and uh, the brow reshaping. Um, also, you know, it's nice because you can use the uh, the prescription uh, growth factors as well to make the lashes grow longer. So it's a nice synergy, all of uh, these things together. I tell you what, talking about synergy, I felt like if I was a client of yours or a member of your, I don't know if you have memberships, but I feel like you need to have some kind of membership for this incredible place, <laughs> um, that I would be spending countless hours in there and come away not just feeling rejuvenated in my face but rejuvenated in my body and soul almost because there's quiet spaces for contemplation there's beautiful yes. spaces in there there's clinical areas um there's areas focused on you know your body and and your fitness and well-being you walk past a couple of you know nice looking gym boys in your in your premises and I thought, oh, how, <laughs> how unique and wonderful i think i'll stay here <laughs> oh that's lovely and in historically we've had a bit more separation between the aquarius health and medi spa day spa type facilities with the swimming pool and the plunge pools and saunas and steam room etc uh and we've kept the clinical cosmetic image clinic separate from that but really now i think we're merging them more and uh you know turning them into one big medi spa situation i think this is the way of the future and uh you know it was a great honor to actually win global medispa a few years ago uh but i think we need to keep stitching them together and uh, making it one space so when people come in for their injectables treatment they're often very type a driven successful people uh we need to spoil them a little more teach them how to slow down and and stress and unwind power de-stress I, I kind of think because you almost have to do it very quickly don't you these days you know you need to get that mental health well-being sometimes ticked off on the do list in the morning even before you start work <laughs> love that power wellness power power relax power de-stress <laughs> that's right <laughs> Oh, for busy people, that's exactly what they need. Oh my goodness. Yes. I, I do I did walk into your space and, and think this is the way of the future, as you said. I think things are moving quite slowly but surely in that direction because we're understanding that there is a, a powerful connection between our bodies and, and minds. I don't know if you describe subscribe to that theory of, you know, we are a complete person, 360. We need to look after our aging and our well-being as as a, as a complete entity, not rather than just fix the cosmetic approach. Is that something that you subscribe to? 
Absolutely. And I think it goes both ways that when we look after ourselves and we're fit and uh, we do our mental health uh, processes, whether they're, you know, whatever they are, meditation, positive affirmation, gratitude journals, concentrating on love and giving in your mind, like Tony Robbins recommends when he does his, uh, you know, mindfulness uh, program in the morning. I think all of that's important, but likewise, I think actually it goes the other way and the studies actually support this, that if, for instance, you are having muscle relaxants in your frown, then you actually are becoming less stressed and less depressed. Numerous studies do show that not only do the uh, emotions follow the motions, but the motions follow the emotions as well. And if you're not frowning, you actually feel better about life. And I think it'd be a potential uh, space for psychiatrists to pop possibly enter where they're doing uh, muscle relaxants, such as Botox in the frown, to help their patients de-stress and, and feel happier. The psychologists actually have a big word for it, and unfortunately, they've only told it to me once. Uh, but I'm dying to find that beautiful word that describes that phenomenon where when you're not frowning, you just feel happier. And I think also when people look in the mirror and they see a refreshed, you know, happier face looking out at them, that is also perhaps, uh, you know, a positively aging uh, face as well, that they feel invigorated and energetic. They feel they can greet the day with uh on you know a higher octane level of energy and i also think they just feel healthier and they feel as if they're going to live longer it's a weird trick that we pay that we play in our own mind on ourselves but it just works i think i think you need to get in front of opera and tell them that because after i read the guidelines they were specifically and categorically saying that there is no connection between looking better and cosmetic procedures and a sense of well-being or improved health or mental well-being at all um that there's no proof and correlation to that that's a that's a oh, well. statement they put in those guidelines <laughs> people often say there is no proof because they haven't read the studies and they're not aware of the proof but it doesn't mean there is no proof when it's it's a lovely debating kind of rebuttal tool for everything there's no proof but often there is if you just dig deep enough you can see that it's there and that's probably part of the reason people don't do cosmetic medicine for vanity and because they're trying to kind of trick the world I think they they do it because they feel better in themselves I think also there are prejudices and discriminations out there that you can actually, uh, you know, fight yourself with cosmetic medicine. And there's, you know, suggestion that the greatest discrimination on earth is actually ageism, where people subconsciously, subconscious bias, you look at an, at an old person and you kind of write them off and think, oh, they've got nothing to offer, they're fuddy-duddies, they're not with it. Uh, but, you know, if they're looking younger, fresher, better, then perhaps that is a way that we can fight that uh, that world's biggest discrimination, uh, which is more than against the discrimination against uh, racism, races and gay people and amputees and and fattists and all of those myriad discriminations that that people harbour in their mind and and often unwittingly and subconsciously and not willingly. But, uh, you know, if we can help fight them and make people feel better, then I think it's a great thing. Our industry and what we do is so much deeper than what it appears on the surface, isn't it? Such a shame that you actually have to be in the industry to, to understand it or a patient of the industry to actually understand um, how deep it how deep it runs. Um, and we wish our regulatory bodies would delve into our industry a little bit more so that they could understand it a little bit better. But I suppose we'll talk, touch on that a little bit later in our podcast. What you were talking about now between that mind-body connection and that holistic approach to um, well-being and wellness, do you think that's a reason why when you walked into your space you decided to to purchase that area? Because previously you were in a different space. What made you come to want to purchase the space you're in now? Mm, I was a lover of spas 
for many years and would gallivant around the the spas in Germany. My mum is German and we'd go to Germany a fair bit and uh, and I just found them alluring and lovely and I just wanted to bring that, I suppose, to Brisbane where it was cosmopolitan, European and and obviously Asian as well. It was actually a Korean, Korean uh, health centre uh, when I bought it. And I think it was just that uh, that passion for sitting in saunas and unwinding, relaxing, enjoying the conviviality of those spaces. You know, I wanted to share with people. A bit of a stress bunny myself, I suppose. And uh, and I did find that going to these places just uh, was, in, you know, very intensely relaxing and I adored doing it. And uh, so I think that's why I just put my mind to finding a space like that. The Aesthetic and Beauty Industry Council is Australia's peak industry body, representing the collective professional beauty and aesthetic salon, clinic and spa community. Created for the industry, by the industry, our council is a collaboration of industry leaders who bring their commitment and specialised skills to raise industry standards, guide regulation and be a strong voice to government. At ABIC, our purpose is to provide an accessible and supportive organisation for the betterment of the professional beauty and aesthetic field, to enhance working practices and promote unity across the various sectors of the industry. ABIC's mission also includes being a trusted source of referral, education and guidance for clients of the beauty and aesthetic profession. ABIC is here to support our members through an extensive offering, including hundreds of valuable resources, HR support and industry expert facilitators to ensure your continued growth and success. Join us today and together let's safeguard the future of the beauty and aesthetic industry. Find us at www.theabic.org.au. At ABIC, we are here for you. I used to inject in you know, a two-room place near, you know, the Queen Street Mall. But, uh, and probably, to be honest, it probably made as much money, perhaps even more than a big day spa where you've got incredible overheads. But there's something in me that just, that hangs onto it and just wants to make it really, really work and, uh, and, um, and just see the fruits of my labour there. Mm, sometimes it's some, there's something to be said uh, for passion so sometimes it's not just the money element for exactly what we do. it is definitely a vision that we have and a dream that we have to come to fruition I suppose and that's what I walked into I feel like I felt like I walked into a, a fairy tale an enchanted place where it was oh. your, your dream had come to life and it was just such a beautiful experience and I have no doubt that your dream is to make that one big space, but I have no doubt that once your dream comes true and you have that sense of congruency that you've, you've wanted throughout the, the two different businesses, you'll actually come out better than your two-room clinic, I would say. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> because I tell you what, it is, I think, the way of the future, that type of um, environment. I definitely realised that a long time ago that when I went overseas and I actually saw complete cosmetic wellness they call it overseas and I think that's something to be said for those two words combined together that you do so well but you offer so many different treatments as well tell us about some of the treatments you offer I know that you offer the traditional ones but Ingrid you blew my mind because there was one special room in your <laughs> clinic <laughs> that had my eyes popped open and you've also written a book about it Yes, well, the little room is where we do penis enlargement, <gasps> which is a passion project of mine. I've been doing it now for seven years, and it started off when a patient came in, and we did his usual Botox and fillers in his face, and then he said, do you do penile augmentation? And I went, no, but uh, let me look into it. And so went on Dr. Google and found out that it's actually been done since 2003 and it was developed primarily in Korea and you know since then it's just getting bigger and bigger I've got the penis 
fill a alert, Google alert on and they're just coming in thick and fast these <laughs> days where it's springing up everywhere and especially, of course, in the States. But, uh, you know, now we probably do about a third of our revenue is with penis filler. And I've written a book about it now and uh, it's called Private Renovations. It's on Amazon. It's only $4.99 for a download or you can buy the book for about $30. And uh, they say everyone has a book in them. Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind, said that and that was mine. I don't think there'll be another one because it's writing a book is always a lot more work than you ever expect. So a lot of weekends were kind of taken up with it. But I particularly love it because the penis guys are a, a, a breed amongst themselves in a way. It, because it's kind of new and cutting edge, it's very much the alpha males that are doing it. And also it's an expensive procedure because instead of doing, for instance, one mil in the lip, you're doing 20 mils in the penis. Remember, there's five mils in a level teaspoon. So, you know, doing like two teaspoons doesn't cut the mustard. Generally, that's that the happy place. When they have 20 mils, they're more than twice as happy as when they have 10 mils. Huh. Um, and these guys are just alpha males, very successful. They're often kind of paradoxically also very laid back. So... You know, there's less angst with them as as a group of guys. They just make their mind up and, and they're in for it. And uh, their careers are fascinating and they're, they're just go-getters and often have a good sense of humour too because it's a bit of a, you know, nervous kind of energy that they have when they're coming in because they're thinking, my gosh, this is going to bring tears to my eyes. They're incredibly brave for being there. But paradoxically, it's an incredibly comfortable procedure and guys who have the Botox in their or the fillers in their uh, in their faces say that's a lot more painful than having penis filler so you know in in nervous situations often people's sense of humor comes out uh you know like if they're nervous in a in a plane of people course. become instant comedians don't they and I think in this situation they're often very amusing too these guys <laughs> Uh, but they're just great to get to know, to talk to, you know, you're in there, you know, often an hour with them. So you cover a lot of topics about, you know, the economy and their business and who they are, where they've come from. So, you know, it's a very good experience to to be in there. I'm the director of Androphil, which is a uh, international company that does penis filler and uh, it was founded by Dr. Gary Horn in the UK, a, a plastic surgeon there. And uh, so it's nice to be affiliated with the world's biggest penis filling company, I suppose, and uh, to learn from them. That's huge. And no pun intended, mm. but it's incredible. That it's, <laughs> you are definitely leading in the space of this particular treatment. And, and oh, it's fascinating hearing about, you know, these guys that are coming in and really feeling comfortable in their own selves and their own skin and and I suppose being really jovial and and happy and confident and relaxed and this is adding to their lives rather than it you know being something that they have to be ashamed about or something that they need to kind of have in have in you know particular secrecy or particular stress about that's fascinating to me it it is a bit funny. Um, I had one guy who came to the counter to pay after the procedure, and there was a woman who looked him up and down, who just had a procedure, and she, she said, "And what have you just had to him?" And he said, "Penis filler," and that just made us all break up. But and then there was another story about a guy who came in with penis for penis filler, and his partner had lip filler, and later they went to visit his father, and he saw his partner's lips and he went oh my god look at you both what are you going to do next penis filler and he said to his dad oh dad i've already had that <laughs> it just makes me wonder whether there's a genetic component there because no one's generally heard of penis filler and i wonder whether the dad had actually been googling penis <laughs> filler which is why it was on the top of his mind when his son walked in and he asked him the question about uh, whether he had you are a cheeky cheeky <laughs> human i tell you what you made me laugh so much when i walked into your space and immediately i walked into the you know your clinic and i was greeted by i can't tell you how many how many people greeted me at the same time with the big smiling faces at the front i think it was about six or seven just there almost with open arms 
um, huge smiles. I felt like I was a star of the show walking into your into your space. Oh. And there you were, um, lounged on on the cat on the beautiful couch. Welcome, Stephanie. Come on in. And everyone was so happy. And immediately I thought, I need to bottle this. How do I get this atmosphere, this happiness, this extreme? Um, I don't know. Uh, satisfaction I could see on everyone's face. They wanted to be there. How do you keep your team so enthused and so excited to be at work? You know, tell us a little bit about your leadership philosophy there. Oh, well, Steph, that's so wonderful that you felt that. And you are like a star when you walk in and your beautiful, warm extroversion, oh. you know, that's mirrored to you in life, no doubt, wherever you go. But yes, fun is a, an important value for me. And, uh, and, um, you know, there's one person I pay a lot of money at work because she just is like the court jester and makes me laugh. And I just <laughs> want to keep her there, you know, just making making the whole environment positive and uh, You hear that, and, everyone uh, makes your boss laugh there. and you'll get a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm ashamed to kind of admit that, really. I must say that it might look in a way like everyone's happy at work. To other business owners out there, I just want them to know that it's like the duck feet, isn't it really? It looks calm and happy on the on the outside, but often underneath there's those feet furiously paddling and and uh, problems underneath to the point where I actually uh, said to my partner who, who manages like 40 people, you know, are the problems, are the staff problems that we have kind of normal or is there something really wrong with us? And and she said to me, no, I think that's really normal. It just happens, you know, everywhere in life that 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 is the major problem that one deals with. So to all the other business owners out there, don't fret if you think you're, you know, problematic or you have terrible problems. I, I just think that uh, it's just a common saying in life and staff problems are, are uh, just prolific generally. And that, might I say, is why we joined ABIC, ABIC, you know, I think in, in, in Brisbane, we just say ABIC, but you say ABIC down in Melbourne, and um, uh, is because of the wonderful support that's provided by your company so that when you have problems, you can just ring and say, what do we do? And then you get great advice and emails, you know, outlining what we should do. Um, because I think that is the great challenge for businesses these days is fair work and a lot of business owners, I think, think it's call it unfair work because it's, you know, it is kind of geared towards the employee at the moment, not the business owner. It can be very, very difficult uh, to, you know, deal with, uh, you know, staff problems and, you know, you get nervous when you see that Technology One, for instance, uh, ASX listed company is, has paid six million dollars in one human resources uh, case where you know for unfair dismissal. So, but how does one deal with staff? What are the tips that I have? I think trying to keep a happy workplace is really important. I heard once that uh, you know you try to treat your clients and customers. Uh, like VIPs, but you have to treat your staff like your most VIP clients and, and customers. Um, and I'm learning that more and more. I'm really trying to, to, in a way, love my staff, like really love them. And I really recommend a book called All In by Mike Michalowicz, or look, his surname, couldn't spell it for the life of me, <laughs> but it's a wonderful book talking about the importance of good team culture and having regular social, uh, you know, events and trying to find out what makes your staff tick, trying to even find out what their goals are for their own life. And if I can care for them as, as a person beyond the workplace, you know, as a human being, then uh, I think that's going to make life a little bit easier. But uh, I can tell you it's very, very hard to keep staff happy. And we all screw up. You know, that's part of life, really. We all do. And it's so refreshing, <laughs> actually, to hear we all screw up because 
you know, so many business owners, and of course we're a not-for-profit organization. We're at the peak body in our in our space, in the beauty and aesthetic space. So I think we are, we are actually the only umbrella association that crosses between beauty services, beauty, general therapy, and medical aesthetic. And we are, we strive to unite the industry. And we see similarities and symbiotic relationship between, of course, all areas of um, beauty and cosmetic wellness and cosmetic non-surgical cosmetic enhancements, as you would know, because your space embraces that. But the common thread with all of these businesses, you'd think that there would, would be differences, but it's actually staff and culture. It is one mm. of the biggest areas of worry and concern. And I would say it's starting to become an anxiety with business owners. They have a staff team and culture anxiety um, that's honestly affecting their mental health at work and we always talk about staff and employee mental mental health and wellness and well-being right um but we're really not talking about business owners mental health and what they're actually going through and the one common thread every time we get a phone call is that high level of stress the high level anxiety and they almost throwing up their hands saying look i can't i can't do this anymore i don't want to own a business anymore it's hard mm -hmm. ir makes it hard um hr makes it hard um, fair work makes it hard, but also it's just a hard environment Environment with all the payments that, that we need to make, all the entitlements that there are, all the tax, you know, loopholes that, that we need, that we fall into, not in our favour, mind you. And so it's becoming this landscape where, where businesses are saying, this is just too hard, I want to throw my hands up and close my business. And, you know, I walked into your space and I thought, oh, Ingrid doesn't have any of these problems because <laughs> your staff was so happy. But it's actually really comforting to know that it's it's everyone feels this way, right? Mm, absolutely. And you are so right that it is really important to take that time out if you are a business owner to try to look after yourself and uh, do exercise. That's so important, isn't it? To de-stress and, and find those mental health uh, that ritual that, that is going to work for you. There needs to be, um, you know, like a body that protects such as ourselves, but um, there is fair work that represents employees. But, you know, I always get the question, who represents business owners? You know, we do as a peak body, of course, um, but I think more work needs to be done with regards to helping those um, people that run businesses to actually survive and run those businesses well. I think there really needs to be some kind of parameters put in place there because, as you said, it is one of the biggest stresses that our industry and other industries that own businesses have, you know. But, you know, you're, you're such a wealth of knowledge in everything, obviously, in everything in our industry, but also as a business owner and as a human. Um, this podcast has been enlightening in so many ways. Uh, and I love that you talk to the deeper strain, you know, of the things that we do and the things that we offer and what it means to be a, um, a business owner in this day and age, but if there's one piece of advice that you could give to our industry, to professionals or to business owners, what would it be? Well, one uh, thing that I need to learn more of too is to know your numbers and try to, you know, you've got to understand your expenses, you've got to cut your costs where you can. You know, there was a year that we turned over a revenue of two million three hundred and thirty thousand dollars but our expenses were two million three hundred thousand i mean how scary is that so kind of understanding how you're tracking because even though it looks busy even though you look as if you you know you're mm -hmm. making a lot of money you can get really shocked when you find out you know all those expenses that um that uh, you know land in your inbox really so I suppose just having insight into that area which I find is so difficult <laughs> to oh, really get I think we all do <laughs> <laughs> that's right we come that's, into a, the fashion. that's a degree in itself yeah well you come into the fashion and then you get hit with numbers and you're like I didn't this is not what yeah. I want to do I wanted to, I wanted to <laughs> make a right. difference in people's lives <laughs> that's how right I'm a big picture person yeah how did you that's turn right. that around you know so many businesses are asking me you know how do you turn this around when you are at you know the, your business is costing you more than you're making even though you're busy and you're looking great how did you manage to turn that around because once you're stuck with those expenses once you start with those expenses it's actually hard to shave back 
everything's messy, mm. you know? Absolutely, that's right. And uh, I think, um, you know, in, in most of my life I've had business coaching and uh, I think uh, having a mentor there who can advise you and push you to do the things that you don't really want to do. Everyone's got a humongous do list, but you tend to do the things that appeals to you most or that's easier to do, but they make you uh, do things that you really don't want to do. And then you have to be accountable to your business coach because you're paying them and and you don't want to fail. So I think having having a person there who can uh, guide you is, is very important. Wow. That's wise, wise advice. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Goodness me, you are, as I said, an inspiration, a wealth of knowledge. It was a coup to get you on our podcast today. I'm so glad that you came to speak to our audience. Um, thank you so much for supporting our industry through your membership as well. We are so happy that it's valuable to you. Um, and we definitely want to have you back on our podcast and maybe come and speak at our conference one day. That would be wonderful. Oh, I'd be delighted to do that, Steph. And thank you for being so warm and welcoming and doing such a great job yourself. Thank you. Thank you. You've reached the end of another episode of the Beauty by Abic podcast, your online support community for the aesthetic and beauty industry. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stay connected.